I'm Dustin, a cloud support engineer here at the Dallas AWS office. Customers sometimes ask me about data protection and recovery with storage gateway cached volumes. I tell them that they can leverage EBS snapshots to take point-in-time copies of their volumes and then use those snapshots to recover that data at a later time. Before we dig into EBS snapshots, let's go over cached volumes with storage gateway. Cached volumes are iSCSI attached block storage volumes that store data durably in a special portion of Amazon S3 that is dedicated to the storage gateway service. Cached volume gateways also provide a fully managed cache of hot data kept locally on disk attached to the storage gateway appliance. You can protect those cached volumes by using two different features of the AWS storage gateway. Amazon EBS snapshots, which are stored on Amazon S3, and clones for cached volume, a new feature we added in May 2017. In this video, I'll explain when you may want to use each of the features for data protection and recovery. I'll also go through the steps to create snapshots of your volumes and show how to recover volumes based on EBS snapshots. I'll also step you through how to make clones and perform recoveries with them. Let's start with when to use EBS snapshots of your cached volumes and what they do. EBS snapshots provide point-in-time copies of your volumes that will be stored in S3. The primary reasons to use EBS snapshots are to have specific recovery points and to also have the flexibility to recover applications to Amazon EC2. These snapshots can be taken on a schedule or on demand. They can be used for recovery or migration, both on-premises via the gateway or in the cloud as full EBS volumes attached to host applications in Amazon EC2. Let's get started using these features. First, let's create an EBS snapshot and use it to create a volume. Let's sign into the AWS Management Console. I've already done this on my end, so let's go ahead and go to the Services and then Storage Gateway. From here, let's go to Volumes and let's select the volume we'd like to make a snapshot of. I only have one, so let's just select this one. From here, we're going to go to Actions and we're going to create an EBS snapshot. I'm going to go ahead and give it a description. From here, we're going to Create. After the snapshot is triggered, it is assigned an ID and it becomes visible on the console and AWS command line interface immediately. However, it initially has a pending status. When all data written to the volume prior to the snapshot request has been uploaded from the gateway and into EBS, the status changes to available. Naturally, the time this takes varies with the size of the volume. After the snapshot status is available, you can use the snapshot as the base for a new gateway or EBS volume. A common question customers have is, how do I know what data is in my snapshot? The answer is that a snapshot represents a point-in-time copy of the volume at the time the snapshot is requested. The snapshot contains all of the information needed to restore your data to a new volume from the time you requested the snapshot to be taken. Data that was written to the volume by your application prior to taking the snapshot is included in the snapshot even if that data has not been uploaded to AWS. If you want to keep snapshots on a regular basis, you can use a snapshot schedule. To do this, you select the volume that you would like to use, you go to Actions, and then you go to Edit Snapshot Schedule. From here, you'll choose the start time. I'm going to leave this default. And you can also choose the recurrence time. I'm going to set this to every 24 hours. I'm going to go ahead and save it. From here, snapshots will be taken every 24 hours on this schedule. If, for example, the application using the volume had an error and went down, or a network problem took the gateway offline, you could recover by using one of these point-in-time snapshots. Or, if you want to create a new volume based on a snapshot, say for application testing, we can show you how to do that. To create a new volume from a snapshot for access via the storage gateway, first you have to get the snapshot ID. To get the snapshot ID, go to the volume, select the volume, and then look under EBS snapshots. Select that snapshot. This will take you to the EC2 dashboard where the snapshots are listed. Let's go ahead and copy down the snapshot ID for the snapshot we want to restore. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this one since this is the only one we have. Now, let's go ahead and create a volume based on that snapshot. Let's go back to the storage gateway tab that we have open. From here, we're going to select volumes and then we're going to go to create volume. Choose the gateway that you'd like to create the new volume on. You can recover it to an existing gateway or you could recover to a different or new gateway. If, for example, your original gateway is unavailable or offline. In this case, I'm going to select my volume gateway. Go ahead and enter the capacity for the new volume. The capacity for the new volume can't be smaller than the size of the snapshot from which you are recovering. Because of that, I'm going to go ahead and select 120. Because I'd actually like to make it a little bit larger. The original volume was 100 GIB. 
Next, in the volume contents, select based on EBS snapshot. Then, we'll enter that snapshot we copied earlier into the snapshot ID field. From here, we'll need to give the volume a unique name. My original name was volume 1, so I'm going to call this volume 2. From here, we're going to go ahead and create volume. I don't need a CHAP configuration, so I'll go ahead and skip this for now. The service will now restore that EBS snapshot to a live gateway cached volume. After this process is completed, your new volume is available on your specified gateway, and you can then attach or mount it to your host application. Now let's move on to creating a volume on EBS from a snapshot for recovery. To recover a volume on Amazon EBS, you mount the specific EBS snapshot as a full EBS volume. Let's walk through doing this through in the console. From here, let's go ahead and go to the EC2 console. So we're going to go to Services, and then EC2. We'll need to make sure that we have the correct region selected at the top right. Um, we did create the, the snapshot in Ohio, so that's good. If you need to restore the snapshot to a volume in a different region, you can copy your snapshot to the new region, and then restore it to a volume in that region. For now, we're just going to create a volume in this region. So let's go ahead and select Volumes. And let's go to Create Volume. In the Create Volume dialog box, for volume type, choose either General Purpose SSD, Provisioned IOPS SSD, or Magnetic. In my case, I'm going to choose GP2. For Snapshot, let's go ahead and select the snapshot we made previously. In my case, I'm just going to type Volume 1, because I included that in the description of the snapshot. From here, I'm going to go ahead and select my snapshot. And it's going to fill in the snapshot ID for me. For Size, enter a new size for the volume in Gibby Bytes, or verify that the default size of the snapshot is adequate. In my case, I want to make it a little bit larger, so I'm going to choose 120. If you specify both a volume size and a snapshot ID, the size must be equal to or greater than the snapshot size. For IO1 volumes, in the IOPS field, you'll also enter the maximum number of input-output operations per second that the volume can support. In the Availability Zone list, select the Availability Zone in which to create the volume. EBS volumes can only be attached to EC2 instances within the same availability zone. In my case, I used availability zone A, so I don't need to change any details here. But I could need to change it if my instance was in a different zone. Okay, from here we're going to go ahead and create the volume. An important note, if you've restored a snapshot to a larger volume size than the default for that snapshot, you need to extend the file system on the volume to take advantage of that extra space. After you've restored a volume from a snapshot, you can attach it to an instance to begin using it. Now, let's look at how you can make a clone of a volume from the most recent recovery point. A volume recovery point is the most recent point in time when all the volume data is consistent. There are two primary reasons you would recover, or mount a new volume, using a volume clone. First, using clones does not require the prior creation and storage of EBS snapshots. Second, for recovery purposes, it is often faster to create and access the clone because the Storage Gateway service presents the new volume instantly and then copies the data from the initial volume in the background. It is important to note, though, that for maintaining specific prior points in time for recoveries or to recover directly to an EBS volume, EBS snapshots are the best approach. All right, so to make a clone of a volume, let's first go to Services and then Storage Gateway. We're going to go back to the screen where we created the volume. Instead of choosing Based on EBS Snapshot, choose Clone from Latest Recovery Point. Then, on the Source Volume tab, choose the volume you want to clone. I'm going to select the first one here. Give it an iSCSI name. This name needs to be unique. I'm going to call it Volume 3 since I already have Volume 1 and Volume 2. Let's also select the Capacity here. I don't need it to be too much larger, but I'm going to go ahead and just make it 150. So let's go ahead and create a volume. I don't need CHAP, so I'm going to skip this for now. But this would let me authenticate against that volume. From here, let's take a peek at the volumes on the left. We can see that that new volume is available and ready to be used. Thanks for watching, and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.